sa susunod pong mga linggo ay pag-uusapan natin ang itong iglesia na binigyang pansin ni Jesus nung uh, nabubuhay pa ko si uh, John the Beloved. So, si John the Beloved po, dahil sa kanyang uh, pag-ibig at testimonya sa ating Panginoon, pinatapon ho siya sa isang isla na nangangalang Patmos. Ayon ho sa tradisyon, dahil lahat po ng apostol ay pinapatay. Si San Pedro daw ay pinako sa krus ng pabaliktad. Yun ho ayon sa tradisyon. Si Pablo ay pinugutan ng ulo. Gayun din si James. Uh, si uh, Thomas daw ay pinalata ng buhay. At ito naman si John. Ang sabi ng tradisyon ay pinarusahan at nais siyang patayin sa pamamagitan ng kumukulong langis. Hindi ko alam kung binuho sa kanya o nilubog siya sa kumukulong langis. Pero ito yung himala. Buhay pa rin siya. John is a very example of a worshiper who is unstoppable, unchangeable, unbreakable. Yan ho ang klaseng worshiper na hinahanap ng Panginoon. Pinapatay na hindi pa rin mamatay. At kahit nabuhay siya, patuloy pa rin siya sa kanyang testimonya sa Panginoong Jesus. At dahil siguro ho dito, siya yung pinagpakitaan ng Panginoon ng vision. Sabi niyo, vision. Yan. Kinausap po siya ng Panginoon. Si Jesus mismo nagsalita sa kanya nung siya ay nasa Patmos. Okay? Meron akong tanong sa inyo. If God wrote a short letter to you and posted it in your Facebook wall, What would He say to you? Kung meron kayo yung Facebook wall at susulat si God o magpo-post siya, sa tingin nyo, ano kayo yung sasabihin niya sa inyo? Sabah! Kung susulat si God sa atin as Nukong, magpo-post siya sa Facebook, dun sa Nukong page natin, dun sa wall natin, ano kaya ang isusulat niya? What do you think He would write and say to us? Ano ang mararamdaman kaya natin as a church when God writes something at sinabi niya sa atin yung katotohanan? Pagbiglang pagbukas ng Facebook wall mo nandun, nakapirma si God. Sinabi niya yung totoo, sinabi niya kung ano talaga yung nakikita niya sa puso natin. Kadalasan ko kasi, dalawa lang yan, hindi natin alam o itinatanggi natin. But what if God posted something on our Facebook just to call our attention? And let us know what's going on in our hearts. Ano kaya yun? And what would be our reaction? Yun hong mga ilang chapters sa Revelation na ating pag-aaralan ay uh, tumatala kay doon sa mga sinabi ni Jesus mismo kay John na kanyang alagad kung ano ang nangyayari, kung ano ang nangyayari at ano ang mangyayari pag laon. Ang dahilan mo kaya niya ito sinulat is to keep His people and His church in the right direction. The reason why God is telling us what's going on in our hearts and in our minds, kahit ayaw natin pansinin, kahit alam natin na merong nangyayari, is because to keep us in the right direction. To make sure that pride, greed, and foolishness did not take over the church. We are the church. Hindi po may get away ang church. Paglipat po natin sa gym, hindi pa rin siya ang church. Wherever we go, We are the church. Sabi mo, I am the church. I am the church. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, we are the church. We are the church. Sinisiguro ko ni Jesus, gusto niyang siguruhin that we would be a light to the world as a church. Kasi ho, doon sa aklat ng Revelations, meron hong pinahayag ang Panginoon kay Juan. He gave a message to Apostle John. So ito ho yun. Umpisaan mo natin sa Revelation 1 verse 9. So when John was in Patmos because of the word of God and testimony of Jesus. Ang sabi ho ni Juan, na andito ako sa Patmos. Andito ako, na-exile ako rito because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. So mga kapatid, andyan ka sa trabaho mo bilang anak ng Diyos. Andyan ka sa sitwasyon mo. Andiyan ka sa eskwelahan mo because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. 
It's not just because ginusto mo. It's just not because nakalusok ka. Hindi. Walang nangyayari sa lupa na hindi pinapahintulutan ng Panginoon. Kahit ang pagkilos ng demonyo, humihingi siya ng pahintulot sa Panginoon. Okay? So we're here. I am here in front of you because of the Word of God and the testimony of Jesus. But then in verse 10 sa Revelations 1, On the Lord's day, I was in the Spirit. So biglang, wow! Kausap lang ni John si Jesus, biglang, zoom! He was once in the Spirit. At dun sa likod niya, he heard a loud voice like a trumpet. At ito ang sabi, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches. To Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamum, Theatara, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Yan po ang pitong churches na pinatungkol uh, ng Panginoon at sinulatan niya at ipinasulat niya ang kanyang sinasabi sa pamamagitan ni Juan. Okay, konting background po. The seven churches found in the book of Revelations were literally first century Christian churches. Yung pitong churches po yan, talagang nag-exist po yan. Tandaan nyo, noong unang panahon, hindi ko sila nagagadar ng ganito. Nagagadar sila sa bahay-bahay, sa kweba. Why? Because they were persecuted. Hindi ko sila makalantad. So, nandun lang po sila sa bahay-bahay. But, in a place like, for example, Quezon City, kung nagagadar tayo ng ganito, and then sa bahay, we're called the church in Quezon City. In that time, they were called the church in Ephesus, the church in Smyrna, Pergamon, Theatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. At lahat po ng lugar nito ay nasa, kung sa, uh, sa uh, pagkasalukoy ng panahon, ay nasa lugar po siya ng Turkey. Kung nasan mo ang Turkey ngayon, doon ho nandun, ang pitong churches na yan. Yun ho kinalalagyan ni uh, San Juan, yung pinagtapunan sa kanyang isla, maka 34 miles away from Ephesus. So, pwede naman ang puntahan. So, ang mga churches na ito ay ibinigay ng Panginoon na maging example sa atin ngayon. Ang sabi niya kay Juan, isulat mo ito. Ito ang nagaganap ngayon. At ito rin ang magaganap paglaong. This is what's gonna happen later on. Ngayon, Tingnan natin kung ano ang Ephesus, itsura ng Ephesus na. Can we show some pictures? Ito ang city ng Ephesus. Ito yung lugar kung saan nandun yung templo ni Diana. Okay? O si Artemis. Diana was known to be the virgin goddess of childbirth and women. So hindi ko alam kung sino ang patron na santo sa ubando pang magsasayaw kayo. Gusto niyo magkaanak, di ba? Kasi yung sabi nila, punta raw kayo sa Ubando, sayo kayo doon. Hindi pa naman ako nakapunta doon, dahil hindi ako naniniwala. So hindi ko alam kung anong sinasayo nila kung, kung hindi ko alam kung Gangnam Style. Pero punta ka lang doon, hindi ko alam kung may tugtog. Sino na ba nakapunta doon? Meron ba? Pero si Diana po, yung goddess of childbirth, yan ho, yan siya. Yung mga gusto magkaanak, doon ho nagpupunta sa kanya. Diana was also worshipped by women who wanted to be pregnant and once pregnant, prayed for an easy delivery. Okay? So, what was God's message to the church of Ephesus? Iisa-isahin mo natin to bawat isang linggo, isang iglesia na kinausap ng Panginoon at nagpatala ng Panginoon sa pamagilan ni San Juan. Basahin mo natin sa aklat ng Revelations to the church in Ephesus. Ang gaganda. Ang sabi nyo doon, These are the words of Him who holds the seven stars in His right hand and walk among the seven golden lamb stands. Okay. Kung babasahin nyo, babalik kayo doon sa last verses sa chapter 1. Meron ho, yung seven stars represent the seven angels. And the seven golden lampstands represents the seven churches. Naalala nyo nung binasa nyo yung Revelations 1? Sa huling-huling nun nun, tiniscribe yung seven stars, yun po ang pitong anghel. 
At pagkatapos yung seven golden lambs dan siya po ang pitong iglesia na tinutukoy ng Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng kanyang mga pahayag kay Juan. Basahin po natin to. Ang church kong ito ay may strength. At napakatindi po ng church na ito pagdating sa doktrina. Inaalagaan po nila anuman ang meron silang heritage. Anuman po ang minanan nila sa mga sinaunang apostol ay inaalagaan mo nito. Ayon nga sa Revelations 2.2 I know ang Panginoon ang nagsasalita si Jesus. And He, Jesus Himself, appreciated the hard work and perseverance of the church in Ephesus. He appreciated it. Sinabi niya, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. So pag tayo po ay nag, nagtatrabaho ng matinde when we work hard and we persevere, hindi ho yun lumalagpas sa paningin ng Panginoon. Hindi ho yan nakakaligtaan ng Panginoon. Alam ho niya yan. Kaya huwag ko kayong mag-alala. Kung hindi man napansin ang katabi nyo, yung pagtulong nyo, hindi man napansin ang katabi nyo, o nakaksambahin nyo yung pananalangin nyo, yung pagtulong nyo sa inyong kapwa, huwag ko kayong mag-alala. Alam mo ni Jesus ang ginagawa nyo. At bago pa lang natin gawin, alam na ni Lord kung anong nasa puso natin. So we move on. So alam ni Lord, ang sabi niya, I know your teacher, work your hard work and your perseverance. Ito pa, I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them false. Okay? Yung church ko sa Ephesus, hindi po sila nagtotolerate ng wicked people. Hindi po sila namumonsinti. Wicked po doesn't necessarily mean evil. Wicked means, nakita na ba kayo ng weak? Yung kina, nakita niyo yung, ano, yung reindeer yung tinitinda pag Pasko, yung minumog? Yung parang rataan na maninipis, weak ang tawag doon. Okay? Ibig sabihin, yung weak, madaling baluktotin. So, ang wicked means, mga baluktot. Yung mga tao na binabaluktot ang katotohanan para sa sarili nilang kapakanan. Those are wicked people. At because they don't stop do, being wicked, they become evil later on. So kahit na may magandang nangyayari sa buhay nila, binabaluktot pa rin nila para sumang-ayon dun sa kagustuhan nila. But the church in Ephesus, ayaw ko nila ito. At ang no kong, ayaw rin natin yan. Tama? Sabihin mo, ayaw. Sabihin sa katabi mo, ayaw ko niya. Ayaw ko ng wicked people. Sabihin mo, ayaw ko sa'yo. No, 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 no. That's just kidding. Hindi, hindi. Okay? Sabi mo, you are a good person. Sabi mo sa katap mo. Kamukha mo si Lord. So, ang tindi po ng church na ito, they're working hard, they're persevering, they're doing the right thing, no matter what the cost. Ayaw mo nilang uh, uh, itolerate ang mga wicked people. At binabantayan mo nila kung merong peking apostol. Yung apostol, oh, siya yung naglilay ng foundation. Eh. Siya yung nagpa-plant ng churches, Okay? Nakakapagturo din po ang apostol. Nakakapag-prophesy din siya. Pero, ang nais pong gawin ng panahon nila, dahil na maraming galit sa iglesia ng Panginoon, gusto nilang infiltrate. sabi niya infiltrate? Ano yung ibig sabihin na infiltrate? Gusto nilang dayuhin, gapihin, sakupin. Gusto nilang pumasok doon, mag-disguise sila na sila ay totoong apostol, gayong hindi naman. Alam niyo, mating din itong church in Ephesus kasi ayaw nila no, at nade-desert nila kung peke. Tingnan mo nga yung katabi mo. Totoo ba yan? Yan. Mukha ba ang totoo yan? I-discern mo nga kung totoo yan. Totoo yan. Totoo yan. Ngiting-ngiti pa lang ni Luis. Totoo ang totoo na. So, ganun mo. Ganun katindi yung church ng Ephesus. Okay? Nakikita nila yun. At ito pa. Saan ba? Ito. Ito. pinoprotektahan mo nila yung kanilang integridad sa Panginoon. Let's move to the next verse, please. But you have this in your... No, 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 no. Okay, okay let's, let's go with that. Let's go with that, that. But you have this in your favor. So sila ay hardworking, sila ay persevering, ayaw nila ng wicked people, ayaw nila ng mga peking apostol, at binigyan pa sila ng favor ni Lord, binanggit po ni Lord, alam niyo may pabor kayo sa akin. Kasi yung ayaw po, ayaw niyo rin. There's one thing that the Lord hates. You know what that is? Sin. 
If you hate sin, just like the Lord hates sin, you have favor with God. And then, yeah, if you hate sin, just like the Lord hates sin, you have favor with God. If not, sorry, that's the Lord speaking, not me. So, ito ang mga nito, but you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. So, itong mga Nicolaitans ay uh, hindi naman kung sila mga giant. Uh -huh. Pero ang uh, uh, um, Nicolaitans, so ito po yung mga elders ng church na ang gusto nila, meron silang posisyon, meron silang hierarchy, meron silang sariling religion nila na andito si Toot, tapos may kasunod Toot, you know? Meron silang parang army, may pinakamataas, may susunod na mataas. And what they do is they lord over people. They lord over the people of the church. Halimbawa ako, halimbawa ang nagplant ng noong ay si Pastor Mark. Tama? So siya yung pinakamataas. Sino susunod sa kanya? Kuya Leo, si uh, Kuya Birch, at si Kuya Lawrence. So ganon. So ang susunod sa amin, mga susunod yung mga leaders na. So, pag Nicolaitans, pag sinabi Nicolaitans, si Pastor Mark ang nasusunod sa lahat. May alam ba kayong ganun reliyon? Kung ano yung babaan na yun na yun? At kailangan sumunod kayo sa akin. Next week ha, hindi na pwede yung ganyan damit ha. Lahat kayo nakalong sleeves. Nakala nyo nagbibiro ako. Nagbibiro ako. Kailangan nakaleather shoes kay lahat. At bawal manood ng sine. Hey, bawal manood ng sine nang wala kayong dalang popcorn. Na meron ganun churches. Totoo lang. Meron ganun. At sila ang nasusunod. But I tell you, everything is permissible but not everything is beneficial. So that's why we have to know God and have to be with God. So itong mga Nicolaitans na ito, ayaw na ayaw ni Jesus yung ginagawa nila. Inaalipin nila yung mga tao sa church para masunod yung gusto nila. Kung may na-imagine kayong may ganong reliyon, ayaw ni God na. God hates it so much. There are religions today that practice this. <laughs> And I hope they will be saved too. You include them in your prayers. But the church in Ephesus had so much strength that in their favor, God has blessed them and declared, I know, alam ko, I appreciate it so much what you're doing. But, in nga po, the thing is, can we go to the next one? Please? Kahit ganun ang sitwasyon. Halimbawa, tayo dito sa Noko. What is our strength? What do you believe is our strength? One is creativity. Tama? We have art to art, we have music, we have production. And I believe that's really our strength. Kasi, sabi ko nga, sabi ko nga kay Ate John, ano, you know, they can get another worship team. Pero all glory to God, they cannot get another production team. Because I think we're only of the few churches who does this, who gives production uh, uh, a big deal. Big deal ko sa atin ng production. Or else, kagulo tayo rito. Siguro yung mag-lead ng worship, pwede gumawa sila ng ibang bayan. But production, iilan mo tayo sa mga churches na gumagawa. So if ever we want to bless other churches, I would always suggest we do production. If they want us to be worship, yes, we will. But we serve other churches according to our strength. And do you think if the Church of Ephesus would serve us today, ang dami natin matututunan sa kanila. Ang dami. Matindi ko sila. But then, despite of all that, Jesus had something against them. Can, can we go to the next? Jesus had something against them. Yet I hold this against you. Isipin nyo ah. 
You think about somebody who's hardworking. You think about somebody who gave everything to serve the church. You think about somebody who's yung nakabantay dyan sa pitong, di ka pwede pumasok. Totoo ka ba? Ganun eh. And they were so serious about it. Talagang! Pinakapakiramdaman nila. Hilos, pananalita. Because ayaw nilang ma-infiltrate yung church nila. They were so concerned about their church. But ito yung sinabi ni Jesus sa church in Ephesus. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Sa lahat ng ginawa at ginagawa ng church in Ephesus, yet, a God who loves them so much have seen something that God wants to direct them back to Him. Yet, I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Despite the strength of the church in Ephesus, Jesus has a charge against them. They got so busy protecting the church and doing ministry, they have forgotten Jesus. And I hope sa atin po, you know, although I praise God that we are a church that's full of talent, but I hope hindi po tayo mauhulog sa ganitong sitwasyon. That's why God wrote, that's why Jesus told John to write this. This is a warning for us today. Nangyari ho ito noon, pero sinabi rin ni Jesus, this was gonna happen later on. And it might happen if we're not aware of it. Yes, we do our ministries well. We give our best. We be passionate about it. We give our time. We give our money. We give our strength. But none compare to the money, strength, and love we give God. Okay yung ministry. But ministry should mold us to be more like Jesus. If our ministry is drawing us away from our first love, who is God, then let's forget ministry. Forget it. If your ministry, if my ministry is drawing me away from my spiritual family, forget it. Ever since we had uh, no Comcast City, kahit love na love ko kong magbib ng worship, I will give it up for you. If somebody invites me and it's on a Sunday, I will give it up. And I love it, I tell you. There's nothing more that I love to do but leave you. But this time, this time, I have dedicated this time for you. And I hope you'll do the same. Sabihin mo, para sa'yo ang oras ito. Sabihin mo sa kato. Para sa'yo. So Jesus told the church in Ephesus, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken your first love. Pag may sinasabi mo natin first love, ang lagi natin naisip, God. Which is true. But ano ba ang first love? Well, I was asking the Lord, Lord, ano ba ang first love? How can you explain to me what first love is? And He reminded me of this verse that can be found in Matthew 22, verses 34 to 40. Let me read it to you. Matthew 22, verses 34 to 40. It says, Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees and Pharisees, got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with these questions. Ito na naman. Ito na yung mga Nicolaitans. Okay? Tinetest nila si Jesus. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Sabay-sabay mo tayo. With all your souls and with all your mind. And the second is like this. Love your neighbor. In my heart, I believe this is first love. More than ministry, I love the Lord with all my heart, soul, and mind. More than my wife, I love the Lord with all my heart, soul, and mind. More than my parents, which I love so much, whom I love so much, I love the Lord more with all my heart, soul, and mind. With all the talents that God deposited in me, I love Him more 
with all my heart, with all my soul. And all my More than the dreams I have for no come for you, for all of us, I love God above all else. Heart, soul, and mind. And this is what the church in Ephesus have forgotten. They have focused on doing the things of God and doing things for God. But they forgot the reason why they're doing it. And for whom they are doing it to. When we love God, we do not put the work of God first. We put first our relationship with Him. Why? If we're not related to God, wala rin mo naman magagawa. Kahit pagpilitan natin sa lakas natin, sa lahat ng talento natin, wala rin po tayong magagawa. You know why, why we're moving? You know why we're moving from here to there? Wala niyo kung bakit. Because God said so. For me, I can only hope and dream. I can do my best. But if God didn't say so, nothing will happen. God said so. God told me to put 120 people at 1,000. Did it happen? Yeah, two weeks it did. Some of you have given their best beyond what they can give. Because God said so. You know, when you hear the Lord, everything comes to pass. Listening is important. Siguro nasanay na yung church sa Ephesus that they're hardworking, they're persevering, alam nila yung ang gusto ni God. Alam nila what God hates. Sige lang sila na sige eh. Routine sa kanila yun. But they have forgotten to communicate and listen to their God. Listening time is important, especially when we're praying. When we pray, we don't only talk. I believe John was praying here. But he was talking to Jesus and Jesus was talking. This is a prayer when God is talking to the one praying. Praying is not only one-sided, hindi lang tayo. Why? Because when we talk, we cannot hear God. When we stop, we listen. When we pray, there's a time that we should stop. Ako, hindi ako madaldal talagang tao. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, mas gusto, gusto ko pang pumanta ng buong araw kaysa magsalita. But because of God's grace, I can talk longer now than I sing. But when I'm praying, I would rather listen than talk. But I have to talk because I have to declare when I'm praying. I know that. I have to tell myself, you have to declare, you have to speak. You cannot always pray na. Di ba mayroong prayer na gano'n? Alam ko na yung Lord. Alam ko na. Oo, oh, alam. Actually, sabi ng Bible, alam na ni Lord yung pangangailangan natin bago natin. Pero what God is teaching us when we declare is, kung sa Kanya, ganun tayong manalangin, ganun tayong makipag-usap. Paano na when we have to evangelize? Ano yan, mind? Hindi ko. It's always to our favor, it's always to our benefit when God talks to us and we listen and we do what He's asking us to do. No, no, uh, this was it last week. Last week po kasi Sabado, na masyaro kami ng misis ko at ano, no, no, it was not Sabado. It was a regular day. Nadano, sino ang alam dito ng Fisher Mall? Madalas po kami pumupunta doon kasi malapit na maliit. Pag pumupunta kami doon, lagi niyang pinupuntahan yung may DVD section. Because he wa- she wants to buy yung mga old DVDs, mga Robin Williams. Di ba wala na si Robin Williams? So, she found this uh, uh, DVD, this movie called Patch Adams. I don't know if you know him, but this is a true-to-life story. Uh, Patch Adams is a doctor, pero hindi ko siya traditional na doctor. Ang sabi ko niya doon sa sine, if you treat a disease, you can win. You can, ano, if you treat a disease, you can win or lose. Okay? Pag yung sakit daw ay, uh, uh, ano yung treat? Lulunasan mo, maaari kang magtagumpay o hindi. 
So when you treat a disease, you might win or lose. But when you treat a person, you always win. No, it's just like ministry. Ministry ka ng ministry. You forget about the one who gave you the ministry. The reason why we have ministry is because it's it's our God. It's our Father who gave it to us. This is what I want you to do for me. By the way, ministry is not what we want to do for God. Ministry is about what God wants us to do for Him. That is ministry. So wag po tayo mag-invento. That's why sometimes we work so hard and we're asking, God, but di ba ako nabibless? Pa? At ganito pa rin, nagsikap naman ako. Ask again, God, ito ba yung pinapagawa mo sa akin? O ito lang yung gusto ko nyo rin? Everything is good. But not everything is righteous. But everything that is righteous is good. Lahat po na yung mabuti. May mga mabuti ba bagay? Hindi lahat ng mabuti ay matuwid. Pero lahat ng matuwid ay mabuti. Ang ibig sabihin ng matuwid, ang ibig sabihin ng righteous, ito ang pinagawa sa ng Panginoon at ginawa mo. That's why we are considered righteous. And this is what this doctor is saying. Well, we always treat people as God treats us. Let's treat God right by relating to Him. Not in the things we want to do for Him, but really relating to Him as a person. As someone who loves us. As someone we love. I always tell this to myself, self group. Relationship is priority. Because relationship is priority to God. That's what Jesus died for. This is what Jesus died for. Reconciliation. Relationship. Wag ho natin uh, bigyan natin ng diin at ng toon ang ginawa ni Jesus. So, ito na nga ho. Sa pagiging hardworking, persevering, at uh, sa pagkainis ng church ng Episo sa Nicolaitans, meron pa rin nakita ang Panginoon sa kanila. Nakalimutan nila ang pag-ibig nila sa Panginoon. Ano ho ang solusyon? Kung tayo man, kung mapag-alaman natin, buksan natin yung Facebook natin, tapos nakita natin, nabasa natin doon. Ay, Leo, alam mo, alam ko lahat ng pinaggagawa mo. Alam ko, gusto mo gusto mo ng worship. Alam ko, gusto mo ng production. Alam ko, nasa heart mo isang malaking church. Alam ko, gusto mong magkatrabaho lahat ng tao at ginagawa mo lahat para matulungan ang mga tao. Mas nakasulat dito. Kaya lang, nakalimutan mo ako. Sign. God. Paano mo kung yun ang mabasa natin? Pagbukas natin ng Facebook natin. What would we do? How would we Respond. I think kung makatanggap po tayo ng katotohanan patulad noon, hanapin mo natin yung Lord, hindi naman po sinungaling ang Panginoon. Pag nagsalita siya, ito ho ang nangyayari. Ito ang nangyayari sa puso. Kadalasan ko kasi hindi natin talaga alam yung nangyayari sa puso. Naka natin okay tayo. Alam nyo, malalaman natin kung okay tayo pag nag-iisa na lang tayo. Wala na yung mahal natin sa buhay. Wala na yung karamihan sa buhay. Doon natin malalaman kung okay talaga yung relationship natin. Pero yung wala na tayong mapapanghawakan, mapapanghawakan, o wala na rin yung kaligayahan na kukuha natin sa mga bagay na nakikita ng mata at nararamdaman. Kundi nandun na lamang sa presensya ng isa at tanging Diyos na nagmamahal sa atin. So si Jesus na rin po, ganito ko katindi ang Diyos natin. He appreciates us so much on the things that we do. And still, He tells us what what we're going on inside us. That we can go back on the right track. At siya pa rin ang magbibigay ng solusyon. Ang hanahangin ng Diyos na gano'n. 
In appreciate ka na, sinabi niya na sa iyo kung anong condition. Siya pa rin ang gagawa ng paraan. Ang sabi niya rito, Revelations 2.5, Consider how far you have fallen. Gano'n na ba akong palayo sa iyo, Lord? Inaamin ko, Panginoon, ang layo mo na. Sa dami ng ginawa ko, akala ko kasi nagsiserve ako sa iyo. Yun pala, dapat tinanong muna kita kung anong gagawin ko para sa iyo. Consider how far we have fallen. Gano'n na ba kalayo? Repent and do the things you did, we did at first. Naalala nyo ba? Yung first time, wala kayong kamuhang-muhang kay Lord. Hindi mo siya kilala. Wala kayong alam sa kanya. And then suddenly, you heard a message, you heard a word from somebody who's talking or somebody shared Jesus with you. Naalala nyo ba yung naramdaman nyo? Naalala nyo yung uh, hinipo ng Panginoon yung puso nyo sa gitna ng pinagdaraanan. This is what Jesus was. Alalahanin mo yung init mo noon. Nung tinawag kita. Nung nilagyan kita ng pananampalaya. By the way, it is also God who gives us faith. We don't have faith. We don't. The initial faith we have to believe in Jesus, it came from God. It came from God. That's why God allows us to go through things so this faith will be strengthened. But Jesus is saying, He repent. Alam niyo ba talaga ibig sabihin ng repent? Ulitin ko, repent means a change of mind. Hindi lang huya, Lord, sorry. Maybe in words it can be expressed. Words like sorry or forgive me. But repentance is really a change of mind. Yes, we're doing good. We're doing a, a lot of good things. But if we have forgotten God, the God who gave us all these things, God who gave us all the things that we can do, let's go back. Let's repent. Let's have a change of mind. Let's go back to the highest point where God wants us to be. One of my mentors taught me another way to look at repent means. Repent means high. That's why the highest place in a building is called when we repent, it's like we're saying, Lord, ibalik mo ko ulit doon sa taas. Ibalik mo ko doon sa taas ng init ko sa'yo, doon sa pinakamatangas na lugar kung saan naririnig kita, nakikita kita, nararanasan kita, nararamdaman kita. Ito yung pinakasinti. Repent. Because God created us. Nandito tayo. At because nabisi na tayo sa napakaraming bagay, nakalimutan na natin siya. That's why Jesus is telling us, consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. Wala naman ako. Alam nyo, just as we are, I tell you the truth, God is peace with us. Wala na po tayong dapat gawin pa para patunayan at i-please pa siya ng sobra. Jesus did everything. All we have to do is respond according to what Jesus did. So if we're doing all these ministries just to please God, yes, He is pleased. Wat wag mo nating gamitin ang lahat ng ito para, wait, para mas malakas yung pabor ko kay God. No? Wala namang favorite si God. Eh. Diba? We do all these things because we want to respond to a God who loves us. And because we are representing Him, our first love. And when we do ministry, it's because out of love. It's not because may gusto tayong patunayan sa Kanya, may gusto tayong patunayan sa ibang tao, o gusto natin ipakita mas magaling tayo sa ibang church. No? Hindi. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to seek the Lord. Lord, have I fallen? Have I fallen? Nahulog na ba ako, Lord? Hindi na ba kita naririnig? Naging sobrang busy na ba ako sa lahat ng aking mga gawain at ginagawa kong dahilan ng lahat ng aking nagagawa at ginagawa. 
para mapalayo sa iyo. Ikaw pa rin ang magbibigay ng strength sa amin para mataamon. You know why Jesus is telling us about these things? Look at me right now. Remember, it is Jesus who's talking here. He appreciates. He's giving a warning. He's giving what's the condition of our hearts. And this time, Jesus is telling the truth. Ang sabi ko ni Jesus, if you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Ano nga ako kanina yung ibig sabihin ng lampstand? It is the church. Papalitan mo natin. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your church from its place. Who is the church? Who will God remove? Who will Jesus remove? If we do not repent, who will God remove? Who, what is the lampstand again? Who is the lampstand? Who is the church? So, see don't tatanggal it again? Is that what you want to happen? That's why God is giving us a warning. Nangyari na ito noon. And He doesn't want it to happen again. That's why even long time ago, inihayag na na kay John. This might happen again. But if this happens again, this word is written. So it would serve as a warning for the churches not to do it again. Because if they do it again and they do not repent, I will come and remove their church from its place. I don't want that to happen. This is God speaking. This is not John. This is not Paul. This is Jesus himself. God will shut down and destroy the church. But do you know what God? Yes. God is merciful and compassionate, but He's also just. The church does not love God and does not love people. It is not a real church. If a church does not love God and does not love people, it's not a real church. It's a misrepresentation of God. See? Why is he ni God, unahin niyo ako. Because you are my children. You are my representative. If we're doing otherwise, other than the character of God and attitude of God, we are misrepresenting the King of Kings and Lord of Kings. God doesn't want Himself to be misrepresented. I'm talking about the kingdom here. We, the church, are the people of the kingdom. And God doesn't want us to misrepresent Him. Ay, ganyan pala yung church. Pwede palang ganyan sa church. That's why, minsan, hindi makilala ng mga tao kung sino talaga yung Diyos na pinaglilin ko tanahan. It's because of us. Including me. And God is saying, umayos-ayos kayo. Magbago kayo ng kaisipan. Change your mind. Go back to where I want you to be. Sabi nga ako, na isang preacher natin dito, pag ikaw ay nag-i-Christianan, pupunta ka sa langit lang ng tanong. Yan. Yeah. Ikaw ay Christian-Christianan lang, punta ka sa langit lang ng tanong. Kung baga nangangarap kang pumunta sa Baguio, ang napunta ka mo lang, Vital Baguio, ganun lang sa Samuel. <laughs> This is a warning ko. Minsan nakakalungkot pakinggan, ano? Ang dami nating ginawa, pinagpaguran, pinaghirapan. And God acknowledges it. He appreciates it. But He gives us a warning para we will not be led astray. At pag narinig natin yung tigit, tinig niya, mag-repent tayo, magbago tayo ng kaisipan, bumalik tayo sa Kanya. Lord, ano? Medyo napalayong na ako sa'yo. 
Pero ganito mang encourage si Jesus. Ang sabi niya, whoever has ears, let them hear. Kaya nga, pakitingnan nga yung katabi mo, may tenga pa yan. Yeah. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Kung ano man ang inihahayat ng Spirit sa mga iglesia, pakinggan nyo, pakinggan nyo. Eto, to the one who is victorious, I, Jesus is speaking, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life which is in the paradise of God. Tree of life here represents eternal life with God which starts now. Hindi pag namatay. It starts now. That's why with Jesus, life does get death. Eternal life doesn't start when we die. Eternal life starts here. That's why while we're, while we're here, Jesus is speaking to us through His Spirit. And Jesus has spoken to us even long time ago to the, to the Apostle John. Apostle John is the Apostle of love. Anything about love between God and man, si John po ang sumula. The Gospel according to John, the epistles, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, it's all about love. So listen right now. Because God has something for those who are listening. He has a reward. Sino may gusto ng reward dito? All of us. All of us. Diba? That's why we're working so hard. Because at the end of the day, every 15 and 30th, meron reward yung sweldo natin. Ama. That's why some of us here are looking for businesses because we want to reward gusto yung pinagpagala natin, gusto nating makita. This is what God is saying. Mag-repent ka lang, I'll give you a reward. Magbago ka lang ng isip, bibigyan kita ng reward. Magbago lang yung pananaw mo patungkol sa relasyon natin, bibigyan kita ng reward. But the challenge here really is, do you know your first love? There's no problem with rewards. Ang dami mo ng salamin. But do you know your first love? Ask yourself. Are you prioritizing your first love? Or you love someone else other than that? Because repentance is leaving behind what God hates. Even no matter how good it is, and focusing on God, who loved us first. It's not about Muhammad, not even David, not even about Buddha, not even Confucius, only Jesus. Our one and only love. In John 1, verse 4, chapter 4, verse 10, this is what it says. You know, sometimes when you love, you have to communicate the love in a way you could be understood. Pag ikaw ay nagmahal, siguraduhin mo na yung pagmamahal na ibinibigyan mo, naunawaan ang pinagbibigyan mo. Tama? Kasi kahit na hindi niya naunawaan, kahit na sabi mong mahal mo yung tao, kung hindi niya naunawaan, parang hindi rin niya natatanggap. And God has a way, God understands it, but He has a way in which He wants to be loved. And it is found in 1 John, or 1 John chapter 4 verse 10. This is love. Let's all read it. God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. This is love. Not that we love God. No. But because He loved us first. That's why it's always a response. That's why when we worship, it is a response. Because we don't have that kind of love. Only when we respond to God and the love that He has given us, can we only 
learn, see, feel that love which is from God. Gusto ko paglipat natin, alam nyo, maayos na ang kaisipan natin. Hindi na tayo nangangapa. Pag-uwi nyo sa mga tahanan nyo, hindi na rin kayo nangangapa. Ano bang gagawin ko? Alam nyo, sagot, pag tinanong, ano bang gagawin ko? Mahalin ko muna si Lord. When you love God first, everything follows. Yun lang masasabi ko. Umalik, makalimutan nyo lahat ng pinagsasabi ko. When you love God first, everything follows.